Greetings ladies and gentlemen, in today's episode we'll be revisiting case lines, except this time we'll be looking at opposed motions. In the previous case lines episode, I provided a detailed explanation on how to create cases, upload documents, and apply for unopposed motion dates. Make sure to watch that episode first in order to understand the practical basics of the platform. Take note that case lines is not utilized by every division of the High Court. So depending on where you are situated in the country, this episode may not be applicable to you. Before we get into today's episode, please make sure you are subscribed to this channel. Okay, let's go. The process prior to applying for an opposed motion date. Before I get into the case line side of things concerning opposed motion dates, I will briefly explain the process leading up to the point of requesting an opposed motion date. An opposed motion date will be required when an application becomes formally opposed. It is not as simple as that, however, so let me explain the process. The following explanation is in line with the Uniform Rules of Court and the Gauteng Division's various practice directives and practice manual. Let's start. Once you have drafted a notice of motion and founding affidavit, in other words, an application, you'll need to attend court in person to issue same. After the registrar has issued the application, it's time to create a case on case lines. I will go through this process briefly with you now, but for a detailed explanation on how to create cases and upload documents, check out the previous case lines episode. In case you forgot, when inserting the case name, you must first indicate what type of matter your case is and then insert the party's details. As our matter at present is unopposed, essentially all applications unopposed until formal opposing papers are received, the case name will look as follows. Unopposed motion, then the brackets where you'll insert the type, fen to S versus fen to E. Let's pretend our application is for the appointment of the applicant as a minor child's guardian. So in the brackets, type guardianship application. Remember to also enter the case reference, which is the case number, recorded with the year in full, and without any zero preceding the case number. For example, 2005-44, 2012-123, etc. The front page entry will be the relevant court's template. Click Create Case. We have now created a case on case lines. Next up, we need to upload to the case the application, which is the Notice of Motion and Founding Affidavit. In order to do so, we need to create a section. So click Create New Section. Under Section Number, insert 1 or 01. Your section title can be either Notice of Motion and Founding Affidavit or Guardianship Application. Use whatever you would prefer. Insert 1 or 01 again for section order. This is not strictly necessary and can be left blank. Leave the two drop-down options as the default. Click Create. You now have your first section so proceed to upload the issued guardianship application to said section. Give it five minutes or so, then click on Review, and you should be able to see your case with the application under the created section. Before you proceed further, the practice directives require that two additional sections be created, namely Judicial Remarks and Invitation List. Create these sections. Take note that with unopposed motions, you may either first obtain an unopposed date and then instruct the sheriff to serve the application on the respondent, Alternatively, you can have the application served immediately after issuing and obtain a date thereafter. In the latter instance, you will need to serve a notice of set down once an unopposed date has been allocated. I personally prefer obtaining a date first before having the application served. For purposes of this episode, we will first obtain a date and then have the application served. So it is now time to apply for an unopposed date. If you watched our previous episode, you would know how to apply for an unopposed date. But as a reminder, you'll need to do the following. Complete and upload to new separate sections, a date application form, a directive compliance declaration, and a blank notice of set down, which is a normal set down but excluding the hearing date. Once you have created the sections and uploaded the documents, you can invite the correct provisional enrollment registrar. The various provisional enrollment email addresses can be found in the revised consolidated directive dated 18 September 2021. Remember that the registrar must be invited between the hours of 9 and 3 p.m. only. The registrar will allocate a date within a few days or a week after being invited to the case. 
I also recommend making a note on the case requesting an unopposed date from the registrar. Once a date has been allocated, insert the unopposed date on the notice of motion and have the sheriff serve the application on the respondent. Take note that we will not be looking at interlocutory or opposed summary judgment applications in this episode. Once the application has been served, you will need to wait for the DS to expire. Once the DS has expired and no notice of intention to oppose is received, you can start preparing for the final enrollment of the matter on the allocated unopposed date. Take note that if you receive a notice of intention to oppose but no answering affidavit, you may proceed on an unopposed basis. Please also note that when uploading documents, you must include the upload date in the document title. For example, notice of intention to oppose 12 May 2022. The upload date is usually automatically included when uploading documents. At this point in time, the review section on case lines will look as follows. You will note that the two additional sections are not visible. This is because no documents have been filed under said sections. You must at some point, however, under the invitation list section, Upload a list of all attorneys, advocates and clients or other persons invited to the electronic case together with their email addresses and where applicable telephone numbers. Do not include court officials or support staff in the invitation list. A template of the invitation list will be included in the episode notes. As the focus of the episode is on opposed motions, let's assume that a notice of intention to oppose was received and thereafter an answering affidavit. When you receive a notice of intention to oppose, you'll need to invite the respondent's attorneys on the file on case lines so that they can upload the notice and all future notices, pleadings, applications, and documents. To invite the respondent's attorneys, click on the People tab and then click Invite New Participants. You will then simply insert the relevant email address, indicate the individual's role, in other words, attorney, and click Invite at the bottom of the page. Repeat this process should you be requested to invite more than one email address to the electronic case. Often attorneys request that their secretary or candidate attorney be invited. Once the respondent has delivered via his attorneys his notice of intention to oppose and answering affidavit, he will upload same to case lines under new sections. In terms of the rules, the applicant may then deliver a replying affidavit should it elect to do so. Let's pretend that we delivered a replying affidavit in this matter. To complete delivery, we need to upload the served replying affidavit to case lines. So go ahead and click on sections again and then click on Create New Section. The section number will be 5, or 05. This is because the respondent's notice of intention to oppose and answering affidavit are numbered 3 and 4 respectively. The section title will obviously be Replying Affidavit. Click Create. You have now delivered the replying affidavit. Take note that when serving by email, upload to case lines together with the relevant notice or pleading proof of service. For example, the email to which the relevant notice or pleading was attached. Under Review, the case will look as follows. We are almost ready to apply for an opposed motion date, but before we can do so, the following needs to be delivered and uploaded to case lines. A consolidated index, both parties' heads of arguments, both parties' practice notes, applicant's chronology table, which is the dates, events and references, and if disputed, the respondent's chronology table and both parties' lists of authorities. Let me break the above down for you in more detail. Once the final affidavit has been delivered, in this case the replying affidavit, the applicant will need to deliver a consolidated index. Should the applicant fail to deliver said index, the respondent may do so instead. Ten days after the consolidated index has been delivered, the applicant shall deliver her heads of argument, practice note, chronology, and list of authorities. The respondent shall then deliver his heads of argument, practice note, and list of authorities within 10 days of receiving the applicant's heads of argument and practice note. If the applicant doesn't deliver her heads of argument, practice note, and list of authorities within 10 days of the index being delivered, the respondent may do so. If either the applicant or the respondent doesn't deliver their heads of argument and or practice note, etc., within the time frames provided, the complying party may launch an interlocutory application to compel the other party to do so. For purposes of this episode, however, we will assume that both parties timelessly delivered their heads of arguments and accompanying documents. Once the above has been complied with, it's time to apply for an opposed motion date. Before we move on to the date application component of this episode, take note that our review section will look as follows. You will note that I have made single sections for both parties' heads of arguments, practice notes, as well as both parties' lists of authorities. Should you prefer, 
you can make separate sections for the respective parties' heads and practice notes. In other words, applicants' heads of argument, respondents' heads of argument, and so on. Also note that sometimes the parties' list of authorities are incorporated in their heads of argument. If this is the case, just create a section titled Heads of Argument and List of Authorities. Whether a party's list of authorities is included in their heads of argument depends on the preference of the attorney or advocate drafting same. Applying for an opposed motion date. Before the opposed motion office profile is invited to the case, and before an opposed date is requested, the following must be attended to. Change the case prefix as it currently states that the matter is an unopposed motion despite being opposed. We must therefore change the case name to look as follows. Opposed motion, guardianship application, Fenter S versus Fenter E. Upload to case lines, a date application form, directive compliance declaration, and a notice of set down with the date submitted. A template of a directive compliance declaration will be included in the downloadable notes. Regarding the date application form, make sure to use the latest version. As at the release date of this episode, the following is the latest date application form. Before we upload the date application form, we need to complete the relevant details thereon. The following needs to be completed inserted on the date application form. The case number, type or write OP or mark a mark next to the post uh, date option. Name of the applicant and respondent. If there are several applicants respondents, only insert the first applicant or respondent's details. The case type. We are proceeding with a guardianship application, so I put a cross or tick next to the letters FO, meaning other family law matters. If the type of your application is not indicated on the date application form, put a tick or cross next to the other and indicate the type of application. Please take note that this episode was concluded prior to the special family court role being introduced. So take a look at that directive for further information as well. Our completed date application form will look as follows. Take note that you can complete the form in pen or do so electronically. Once the form is completed and the Directive Compliance Declaration drafted, you can proceed to upload both to case lines together with the blank notice of set down. Remember, we will already have the relevant sections on case lines, as we initially applied for an unopposed motion date. So you will just upload the documents to the already created sections, which are titled Date Application Form, Directive Compliance Declaration, and Notices of Set Down. These sections under the Review tab will look as follows. I have numbered the date application forms and directive compliance declaration sections as 003 and 004 as judicial remarks and invitation list of 001 and 002 respectively. The notices of set down section has been numbered 11. Once we have uploaded the date application form, directive compliance declaration and blank notice of set down, we must invite the opposed motions registrar. In Joburg, the relevant office profile to be invited is jhbo enrollment at judiciary.org.za and in Pretoria it's ptao enrollment at judiciary.org.za. Once invited we must leave a note for the registrar in which we request an opposed motion date. To do this make sure you have opened the review tab then click on the notes tab. Click on add a case note. Select the widely shared note option. Before clicking save type your note. Your note should be similar to the following. Dear Registrar, kindly allocate the next available opposed motion date for the hearing of an opposed guardianship application. Click Save and your note will appear on the right hand side of the page. The Registrar should reply to your note within a few days. You should already know this, but all opposed motion dates are allocated to a Monday. Just prior to the allocated Monday, the relevant Judge's Secretary will indicate the exact day and time during the week on or at which your matter will be heard. What I mean is that although the date allocated reflects Monday 22 September 2022, your matter may be heard at any time between 22 September and Friday 26 September 2022. The registrar's reply to your note will contain the provisional hearing date, although sometimes the registrar will give you two dates to choose from. Regardless, confirm each council's availability first, after which you can respond to the registrar. Once the date has been confirmed, it will reflect under next hearing date, adjacent to the matter's details on your case list. Your matter will therefore be heard during that particular week, with a specific date and time to be confirmed closer to the time. On a side note, this can be quite a pain as you need to ensure your counsel is available for the entire week, despite only one day being required. Take note that should you wish for a date to be allocated during a specific period, for example September 2022, include such a request in your note to the registrar. 
but make sure to provide reasons for your specific request. A reason could be the availability of each party's counsel. Now that we have been allocated a date, what's next? Procedure after an opposed motion date is allocated. Once the opposed motion date has been allocated, i.e. the relevant Monday, insert the date on your notice of set down and proceed to deliver same. Remember to deliver something means to serve and upload it to case lines. Prior to the hearing date, counsel for the parties must hold a pre-hearing conference and prepare a joint practice note setting out the following. Relevant factual chronology, common cause facts, issues requiring determination, relevant portions of the papers to be read, whether or not the parties have agreed to forego an oral hearing, whether supplementary submissions are expected in the event that the matter will be heard on paper, an updated estimate of the duration of the hearing and other matters relevant for the efficient conduct of the hearing to present to the judge seized with the matter. The joint practice note must be uploaded to case lines and emailed to the email address designated by the judge no later than five court days prior to the hearing date. At the same time, the parties must upload onto case lines an updated index. I like to get this done as soon as possible so that everything is in order well before the allocated date. So, hold the pre-hearing conference and update the joint practice note early on. You can then email the practice note to the relevant email address at a later stage. You will upload the joint practice note under the practice notes section and the updated index will be uploaded under the consolidated index section. I'm not going to elaborate on this as you should know how to create sections and upload documents by now. Once the above has been attended to, you can relax for a bit until closer to the allocated date. It is, however, imperative that the following is complied with by no later than 20 clear court days preceding the hearing date, which is when the roll closes. A computerized notice of set down must be uploaded to the case under a section titled Final Notice of Set Down, and the opposed motions enrollment registrar must be invited to the case. Depending on the court, the email address may be the same for both date allocation as well as enrollment. Once the relevant enrollment registrar has been invited to the case, they shall place the matter on the court roll and invite the relevant judge's secretary to the case. The enrollment registrar shall thereafter remove themselves from the case. The judge's secretary shall invite the judge. The allocated judge will, a few days before the hearing date, notify the parties by email that they're seized with the matter and shall issue any further directives that they require compliance with. This will likely be done via the judge's secretary. You will then argue the matter on the allocated day and at the allocated time. I hope that this episode provided some clarity with regards to opposed motions and case lines. I will be releasing comprehensive notes on this topic, so keep an eye out for that. Please also take note that there is now a court online system, so no new matters will be issued on case lines, but old matters will continue until they're finalized on case lines. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye now.